So the definite integral measures net change. For example, if P is a profit over time, the net change of profit from A to B would be found by doing the total profit from B minus the total profit from A. That'll tell you the net change in all the profit. If P is continuous, it has the derivative P prime. And how we would find this is we would use this fundamental theorem of calculus. So we would evaluate, if we knew a rate of change, we could take the antiderivative of it to the upper bound minus the lower bound, and that's going to give us a net change. So as long as we know a rate of change of a population or anything at any time, we can integrate to calculate the net change. So it could be a population, it could be a profit, it could be anything. If you know a rate of change, you can find net change. So, keeping this in mind, kind of getting ready for a final. So, net slash total change tells me it's an integral. It's the antiderivative. So the total change is an integral. The opposite of that, what do we call the change of the derivative? Derivative wasn't total change. It's the opposite of total change throughout all time. Derivative is change at an instant. So we have two kind of perspectives. If I ask you what is the total change between 2009 and 2029, then you would take the integral. If I said how fast was it changing in 2018, you would take the derivative. So change at an instant is a derivative. Net or total change is integral or the antiderivative. So we have two main types. The other type that we talked about in an exam one was also the average change. So instant change was the derivative. Average change, do you remember what that was? That was just the slope formula. So we have really three main things. Um, total change is the antiderivative. Instantaneous change is the derivative. And the average change, you just use the slope formula. So here, we're going to work the opposite way. So in test one, we were given the function, and we were asked how fast was it changing at an instant. Here, we're going to be given the derivative. We're going to be the, given the rate of change, and we're going to be asked for the net change. So we're just going to go the opposite way from before. These problems are just like initial value problems. So... They're not anything crazy. We're going to follow our steps for an initial value problem that we did when we first learned antiderivatives, so maybe we can write that off to the side here too. For an initial value problem, that's where we found f given f prime. The first thing we did is we took the antiderivative. The second thing we did is we found c. And then there was a third step. It wasn't really a step. It was to write the function that you found. And in this case, it might not be called f of x because we're doing word problems. But those are our three steps. We're going to use those over and over and do some initial value word problems, which I think are a little bit easier than the non-word problems as far as finding c goes. It's a bit better. So as part of quality control, an efficiency study found that the rates at which packages are inspected at Amazon Marketplace sending out online orders by a typical worker t hours after starting work at 8 a.m., is given by this n prime of t. So what's important to me is that I'm given a rate, so I'm basically given a derivative. Remember, derivatives are the instantaneous rate of change. I'm given the derivative and asked for the total net change. How many total packages do they inspect if this is how fast they're inspecting them? So this is the rate that they're inspecting them. The time is in hours, because they're working in hours, and then 8 a.m. is when they start. So 8 a.m. is going to be the time they walk in. So that's going to be their time zero. They worked zero hours when they first got there at 8 a.m. Okay, so let's see if we can do this problem. So we're going to find an expression n of t that approximates the number of sets inspected at the end of t hours. So we want to find the total number inspected. So my first step... To finding n of t given n prime. This is just like initial value, but we were given f prime and we were asked for f. So 
my first step is going to be to take the antiderivative. So I'm going to take the antiderivative of n prime to get back to n. So remember our little diagram here that we've done a couple times is we've started with f and gone to f prime. That was all exam one and exam two. Now we're starting with the derivative and we're asked for the function. So here we took the derivative to get from f to f prime. Now we're given the derivative and we're asked for the function. So we're going to take the antiderivative. Okay, so I'm going to take the antiderivative of negative 3t squared plus 12t plus 15. And then I'm going to write a dt in here instead of dx because we're with respect to time now. So I'm going to integrate as usual. This looks like a basic integral. I don't see any product, quotient, or chain here. I just need to add one, put it in the denominator, put it up top. So I'm going to keep the negative 3, add 1 to my power 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So I'm going to put that in the denominator, put it up top. Next one, I'm going to keep the 12 and put it over what? Well, my power is just 1 when it's not written, so 1 plus 1 is 2. t to the 2. And then the antiderivative of 15 is going to be 15 t for this one, so just be careful not to switch back out for x. And then does this one end with a plus c or an evaluation bar? Well, there's no bounds on my integral, so I'm back to indefinite integrals. They end at a plus c, which is good because my second step is to find that c. So when I go to find that c, I'm also going to rewrite this nicer just because things can divide out, and I would always suggest doing that before finding c. So before I do negative 3 divided by 3 is just a negative 1. So I'm just going to write it as negative t cubed. 12 divided by 2 is 6t squared plus 15t plus c. Now let's figure out what c is. So the nice part about word problems is finding the c is a lot um, easier than having to do the brute force algebra. We just have to think about the problem. Either it's told to us or we can use common sense to figure it out. So are we told the number of packages they've inspected when they just walked into work? Well, I read it. I didn't see a certain number that they started out at. So let's think about it. If you just walked in and you work at Amazon, your job is to inspect packages. You just walked into work and you haven't started working yet. How many packages did you inspect? If they just got there at time zero, when they initially get there, n of zero, the number of packages at time zero should be zero. So this one, it's not said what c has to be because we just use common sense to figure it out. The initial amount has to be zero packages. They haven't really started working yet. So my final answer down here is going to be that n of t is negative t cubed plus 6t squared plus 15t and then my c is just 0 so I'm not even going to write plus 0 because it's a little bit of waste of time. So there's a number of packages after t hours. Tell me how fast the rate that they're inspecting them I can tell you the total by plugging into the antiderivative of the rate. So there we did that first part. The next part says, how many packages does a typical worker inspect during the morning shift from 8 a.m. till noon? So how many hours have they worked if they work from 8 a.m. till noon? So we know 8 a.m. is time zero. They haven't worked any hours yet. One hour later is nine. Two hours later is 10. Three hours later is 11. Four hours later is noon. So they've been working four hours. This I want to figure out how many packages they've been working, they've been inspected in the hours they've been working, they've been working four hours, and I want to find the number of packages they've been inspecting. So should I plug into n of four or n prime of four? So n tells me the total, n prime tells me the rate that they're inspecting packages. So what do I want? How many packages does a typical worker inspect? I want the total amount that they've inspected during the morning portion of their shift. It doesn't say how fast are they inspecting packages at noon. If it said how fast are they inspecting at noon, that instantaneous change, finding that rate at one instant, that would be plugging into n prime, the derivative. But if I want the total of number of packages, I plug into this antiderivative. That'll tell me the total. So I'd put a negative out front. I'd do 4 cubed plus 6 times 4 squared, plus 15 times 4, and I would say n of 4 is 92, 
And 92 what? Four hours in, they've inspected 92 packages. And we just did our first word problem for our antiderivative.